Today's question answered down in the comments is for all the collectors out there. What is the most useless or uh, silliest or, now don't feel shame, but thing you're slightly ashamed uh, you've bought or purchased because it fits in your collection or because it completes your collection? Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today uh, as I unbox a whole bunch of questionable things here on Project Black T-Shirt. Hello, I'm Adam Caesar. Uh, back after a short hiatus uh, with another unboxing and discussion of cult cinema and uh, horror movies and books. We're going to talk about books. There's going to be a book recommendation at the end of this video, as there is with most, if not all, of these videos. So be sure to like, subscribe, and go check out my other videos if you want more horror movie and horror book recommendations. I am once again wielding a knife uh, because I'm going to do another unboxing, and as I've talked about uh, before in some of the other unboxing videos, uh, I'm not quite 100% sure of the appeal of like the cut open a box, hold an item up, and then place it down uh, thing. Uh, so I'm going to try not to do so much of that. I'm going to uh, go through the items that I got during Vinegar Syndrome's vaulted halfway to Black Friday sale. Uh, very cool sale, big, big deal every year uh, on social media. Uh, among uh, Cretans like me. And we're gonna talk about the, the movies I got. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, things I've seen and, and recommendations and other things like that. Uh, so this hopefully is gonna be a value-packed episode, not just conspicuous consumption of watching me uh, hold things up to the camera. Um, and then at the end, we're gonna do a quick book recommendation. Let's crack in to this uh, giant brick. Since Vinegar Syndrome has started doing their um, they're only boxes. They won't send things out in envelopes anymore. This is definitely the biggest, biggest box I've gotten. It's not like their, um, their regular mailers. Packing slip, bubble wrap, bubble wrap. Now, a lot of these releases that Vinegar Syndrome does are slip case, limited edition. Uh, collectors go crazy for them. I like them too because they're just, they're just nice display items. Uh, they're really candy colored and really nice, uh, but they pack everything really well. They, I'm sure their their email uh, every time they sent out a shipment uh, is is full of uh, people being like, "Oh, I got a ding on my on my orgy of the dead slip cover. Uh, you gotta help me." So First, because uh, since these spines are facing me, I'm not gonna hold everything up because you'll you'll see what's in the the box. Uh, one of the uh, one of their surprise titles, very sought after, uh, Night Beast. This is Don Doler's Night Beast. Diller kind of the, uh, the, the, the Francis Ford Coppola of uh, making laser-filled movies in your backyard. I have seen this film. Uh, I, I remember very much enjoying it because uh, it was a, I think it was a trauma acquisition. It was a, uh, something that Troma put out uh, a, a while ago as like a nice double disc. Uh, but a very cool movie uh, and one I'm very happy to have on Blu-ray. Uh, new 2K scan of a of a shot on 16 millimeter film, so I'm sure it's gonna look prettier than it ever has. Maybe prettier than Night Beast should. Next, one of their uh, one of their not secret titles. One of their not so secret titles. This is Satan Slave. Uh, very beautiful, very beautiful art, very beautiful slipcover. Um, clearly, I'm a fan. This is a Norman J. Warren film. Uh, this is uh, one in a in a in a number of of Warren films that. Vinegar Syndrome has released. They also did Prey and his film Terror. Uh, he's, he's a, um, along with like Pete Walker, one of Britain's finest exploitation uh, filmmakers. Because when you think of British horror, you tend to think of Hammer, Amicus, uh, Tygon, uh, things that are maybe slightly uh, classier uh, than what Warren uh, of Inseminoid fame uh, is, is, is kind of famous for doing. Uh, but I, 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 I really enjoy Warren's films. I think uh, in one of these other videos I talked about uh, terror and how much I like that. And I, I look forward to revisiting Satan's Slave. This is a movie that uh, was in a lot of kind of bargain packs or budget packs at the, at the, during the height of DVD when they were doing like double features and stuff like that. When Grindhouse first came out and they were like branding like, oh, Grindhouse style. This is a movie that got packaged a lot. Uh, but I'm sure that uh, Vinegar Syndrome's uh, new transfer this is probably gonna blow those out of the water it's a 35 millimeter camera negative that they scanned in 2k so it should be really really pretty and there is uh, there's a there's a lot of featurettes on here and there's a commentary with Warren and composer John Scott um, and an extra uh, commentary uh, with Sam Deegan and Kat Ellinger 
Deegan does a wonderful job on her uh, podcasts and commentaries. So I'm looking forward to listening to that. Another secret one, another one they kept secret until the day of the sale. What they did was you could buy four Blu-rays. You didn't, you only knew what half of them were. You knew that one, you knew that one was Satan Slave. You knew that one was Mountaintop, uh, Motel Massacre. Uh, and then you got two secret ones. One was Night Beast and the other one was Paul Bartel's Lust in the Dust starring Divine and also Tab Hunter. Now this is this is kind of uh, this is Paul Bartel working with uh, frequent kind of John Waters collaborators to do a uh, a straight up western parody. This is not a film I've seen. This is the first movie in this uh, in this hall that I haven't seen before. Uh, but I enjoy uh, Bartel who did Eating Raoul. Uh, so I'm very 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 much looking forward to checking out Lost in the Dust. I've got a few here that aren't uh, that aren't slip covers that are that are older releases that I just didn't have that I figured I'd pick up because they were very cheap or they were going out of print or things like that. Um, so I've got Russ Meyer's Fanny Hill. This is a Russ Meyer film I haven't seen. One of the few Russ Meyer films I haven't seen. And this is after Immoral Mr. T's, uh, but before uh, Mud Honey and uh, Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, like things, uh, movies that we think of as, as kind of peak. Uh, Meyer. This is a movie he made, I think, in Germany uh, with a German producer. Um, so I'm unsure really what the story is here, but I'm looking forward to checking it out. And then there is uh, on there's a double feature here with The Phantom Gunslinger, a movie I know legitimately nothing about. Next, I have uh, two films by Matt Simber, uh, The Candy Tangerine Man, Man and Lady Coco. These are uh, two black exploitation films, and Matt Simber. Might sound familiar because he also directed *The Witch Who Came from the Sea*, which is a, a movie I talked about years ago on the channel, which I, I really enjoy. Uh, he's also kind of the basis for uh, Mark Maron's character in *Glow*. So if you've seen *Glow* and you know like the, the the kind of crazy director character who's made a bunch of exploitation films and horror films, and they kind of talk about made up ones there, these are some of the real films uh, that Matt Simber made. I don't know all that much about these films, but I do enjoy black exploitation films. Uh, I, I really, really enjoy uh, The Witch Who Came From The Sea, which is um, kind of like drive-in horror programmer, but like elevated slightly and, and done in an interesting way. Next is an etiquette release. This was uh, Vinegar Syndrome's kind of short-lived uh, criterion, competitor criterion-like, um, putting out classier films, putting out non-exploitation films. Uh, this is Dennis, Dennis Hopper in The American Dreamer. I believe this is a, a feature documentary uh, about Hopper and kind of at the height of his um, post Easy Rider days and, and, and hanging out with him and uh, I'm sure him doing uh, drugs and looks like holding a rifle here. Um, so don't know a whole bunch about this movie, just know I wanted to check it out. Um, the last non-slipcover item in the box is Evils of the Night, a movie that I, I own on Gorgon's DVD. And I don't know how different uh, this transfer is going to be because it's not exactly uh, Oscar material. Uh, but it is a movie that kind of runs uh, head headlong into bad taste and uh, ghoulishness. John Carradine's in this, a later career John Carradine uh, appearance. But Evils of the Night. Mentioned it before, but here is Mountaintop Motel Massacre. Look at that. That's a gorgeous slip. That looks so nice. Another film I haven't seen. Uh, I think I've seen like kind of 50-50 in this in this set. But ooh, look at that one, Mountaintop Motel Massacre. That's a that's a cool alternate art, cool cool poster. Um, this is a, a movie I don't know much about, but it's it has the words regional and slasher uh, in their description. So I'm probably going to like it. As with Blood Hook and uh, Blood Harvest. And anything uh, shot outside of California or New York uh, that is a slasher, I tend to like just because I like those little um, period uh, regional touches. Um, there was that kind of outsider art element to slasher films. I'm probably going to enjoy myself. Next, we have two releases in what Vin Vinegar Syndrome is calling the VSAs. It's the Vinegar Syndrome Archive Collection. Now, these are... These are uh, not included with any kind of yearly plan. They don't know how many they're going to do, um, but they are inspired by video store oddities of yesteryear, um, and they're in slightly different slipcovers. They're basically bottom-loading, and they're a little bit thicker 
They are Evil Town and Savage Harbor, starring Frank Stallone. So it's a Frank Stallone action movie and Evil Town, a direct-to-video uh, mishmash that was directed by a whole bunch of different people um, that was like recut, re-edited. These are two kind of video, what they're calling video store oddities, and they come in these slightly oversized cases that uh, load from the bottom. Very cool. They just feel very nice. They're hand-numbered. There's only going to be uh, 2,500 of each one. And Vinegar Syndrome's idea with this is they're going to get video stores and places that sell physical media uh, can, can apply through the website and they can sell them retail and they'll, they'll do them a really good deal uh, to have these out on, on retail shelves. So these are things you can't get on Amazon uh, as much as we love Amazon. Uh, they are just... Uh, just physical brick and mortar stores or Vinegar Syndrome's website. It's a really neat idea, and it's uh, I guess it's an idea. It's a way to kind of both expand their brand and do something nice for these brick and mortar stores that are just trying to hang on, that are trying to preserve that kind of video store atmosphere. Uh, what it was like to go in and be like, "What the hell is Evil Town? Let me go check it out." Um, but they're doing they they did such a nice job with these these this new style of slipcover. You got to figure if they're launching a whole new line. And they chose these two films I frankly hadn't heard of. I frankly hadn't heard of. Uh, you you got you to gotta think there's something there. There's something to them. There's something interesting about these movies. Next, we've got three items uh, that are a little bit weird. And that's why I asked the question up, uh, up at the top of the show. What's the weirdest thing uh, that you've ever bought to kind of complete a collection? The thing that you're maybe not 100% sure about. Um, for me, it's these empty slipcases. These are these are slipcases for movies I already own, movies that uh, when Vinegar Syndrome had released them, they weren't doing the whole collector's slipcase thing. I wasn't so sure I was going to get these, but they were a little bit impulse buys, and they're for films that I really enjoy. They're for Vinegar Syndrome titles uh, that I've recommended to friends that I've, I've watched a bunch of times that I really, really like. Um, so we've got Raw Force, the crazy action ghost uh, tour tour of uh, Asia with uh, some martial artists and sleazy guys on a boat and then they get uh, to an island and there are zombie samurais and it is it is it is everything that you think of everything that you want uh, when you think of an exploitation film all in one movie uh, that's what's great about raw force uh, and I'll, I'll put this I'll unfold this 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 squished slip cover and put it on my movie later. Uh, demonoid film about an evil hand, one of the best evil hand movies uh, that doesn't have Michael Caine in it. Um, a wonderful film. And then the piece de resistance, uh, we have Slaughterhouse. And now Slaughterhouse doesn't go like this, doesn't go like this. It opens, oh yeah. And um, I'm pretty sure I ordered the the case without the movie but i'm pretty sure they they gave me they gave me the movie um well yeah the disc is in there they gave me slaughterhouse i already have slaughterhouse uh so i'm gonna find a way you know what we'll figure out a way to do a, a giveaway to this very nice of them i hope i didn't uh i hope i didn't click the wrong item i hope i didn't pay for slaughterhouse again uh but i will uh, be giving this away uh, probably on Twitter. I'll give it away on Twitter. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm choosing a giveaway right now. Uh, if you go over to Twitter, uh, follow me I'll, sometime today or tomorrow. Uh, I'll figure out what we're going to do to uh, send Slaughterhouse out to some very, very deserving person. This is Buddy Bacon. He squeals like a pig um, as he's uh, hacking up teenagers. Uh, it is one of the best 80s slashers uh, I, I, I adore this film. I think it's great, and I'm glad to have it in this uh, beautiful uh, sideways slipcover. Very cool. That's it. That's it. The box is empty. I've, 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 I've talked about everything. Before we go for today's book recommendation, I want to talk about Rites of Extinction by Matt Serafini, and the reason I am talking about this book uh, after we have uh, unleashed all this Vinegar Syndrome madness and mayhem is if you are the kind of person that enjoys uh, VS, if you're the kind of person that enjoys the, the types of movie movies that uh, Vinegar Syndrome puts out, even the spicier ones, um, uh, Matt Serafini's writing is for you. Um, he's written a number of novels, uh, Feral, uh, Devil's Row, uh, Island Red, 
uh, and they kind of get better and better as he goes along and they're they're all kind of these these um, intense uh, exploitation fueled no holds bar uh, types of books uh, and rights of extinction is his brand new one it is a short novel uh, it is it is kind of his, him dipping his toes into that into that format for the first time because a lot of his books are pretty long um, and he's the early uh, praise for this. I'm, I just started reading it, but the early praise for this is kind of off the charts since what moved it up uh, my list. Uh, beautiful cover designed by Scott Cole uh, about a, a woman who's a private investigator, but she's investigating uh, the the murder of her own daughter. So she goes to this town and starts uncovering secrets and things like that. It's almost like uh, the Matt Serafini take on something like uh, Megan Abbott or uh, Gillian Flynn, those kind of like messed up family crime stories that are also like blur the line uh, or more than blur the line in this case uh, to horror. If you haven't read him before, probably the perfect one to start with. Uh, if you have read him before, uh, could be your new favorite, probably going to be your new favorite. I'm Adam Caesar. If you want to find out more about me or my books, the books I've written, uh, if you want to go buy them, if you want to go review them on Amazon, which I very, very much appreciate, if you want to listen to the audiobooks through the Audible app or wherever ebooks are sold, you can definitely do that. They are uh, great. Uh, the uh, audiobook for Summer Job, narrated by Stacey Glombowski, uh, I'm very pleased to announce was uh, was just nominated for the uh, Independent Audiobook Awards. There's going to be a ceremony and stuff. I think it's in like a couple weeks. It's going to be a ceremony and Jeff Strand's going to MC and hopefully uh, he's going to read out our name. Hopefully he's going to say, you know, best horror, Summer Job by Adam Caesar, narrated by Stacey Klumbowski. But it's a, it is an honor just to be nominated. That's very, very cool. Um, so if you haven't checked out that book in particular, maybe go do it. Maybe go try the audiobook because uh, Klumbowski's, uh, her, her, uh, her, her performance is unbelievable one of the best audiobooks i've ever heard uh so to have it be my audiobook uh even cooler i'm adam caesar uh if you join the mailing list i'll send you a bunch of stuff i'll send you free short stories and novel samples and stuff like that and if you follow me on twitter i'm gonna give away slaughterhouse i have this new <laughs> i have a brand new sealed copy of slaughterhouse that i'm gonna have to do uh it's gonna have to find a way to get rid of so follow me on twitter and i'll think about what i'm gonna even do with that uh thanks so much and i'll see you next week